Hello, glad to have you here. This is from the CBN, bringing you weekly reports and expert analysis of the actions, policies, and economic initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I am Uliye Misidada. It's been four years since the Central Bank of Nigeria first made public the idea of a digitized Naira in the light of an emerging digital world economy. The dream of a digitized local currency known as e-Naira has now become a reality and starting from the 1st of October, Nigerians will be able to download the app to enable digital transactions in e-Naira. Today on the program, we present all that you need to know about Nigeria's digital currency, the e-Naira, plus highlight of the September Monetary Policy Committee meeting press briefing, which held last Friday. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We begin with the highlights of the MPC meeting press briefing at the CBN headquarters in Abuja last Friday. The 10-man committee decided by a unanimous vote to hold the monetary policy rate at 11.5% and also retain all other policy parameters. In reaching this decision, the committee cited that holding all monetary policy parameters constant will enable the continued permeation of current policy measures in supporting the recorded growth recovery and macroeconomic stability in the country. MPC weighed the pros and cons of tightening, holding, holding or loosening. The stance of policy, noting the impact on output growth, price development, unemployment and exchange rate. Members felt that tightening will contract the current level of system liquidity and thus reduce demand pressures in the foreign exchange market. Feels that with liquidity ratio at 30, CRR at 27.5, that this is a tightening measure that should be maintained for now. This will however raise the cost of credit and reduce the volume of credit to the private sector. On loosening, the committee felt that this would lower retail interest rates and improve the ability of obligors to repay their obligations with a complementary reduction in MPLs. The gradual downward movement of inflation may, however, be compromised. E-policy accommodation is increased, leading to a further widening of the negative real interest rate and thus exacerbating capital outflows as investment in Naira denominated assets become less attractive. Members considered that a whole stance would allow the current recovery of output growth and decline in inflation continue smooth, smoothly, thus gradually moving the economy to a sustainable path before adjustments are made to the stance of policy. Based on the above considerations, the MPC made the decision to hold all policy parameters constant, believing that a whole stance will enable the continued permeation of current policy measures in supporting the recorded growth recovery and macroeconomic stability. Committee therefore decided by a unanimous vote to retain the monetary policy rate at 11.5%. In summary, MPC voted as follows. 1. Retain MPR at 11.5%. 2. Retain asymmetric corridor at plus 100 and minus 700 basis points around the corridor and retain the, credit, the, the, the CRR at 27.5%. 4. Retain liquidity ratio at 30%. The committee noted the moderate improvement in both the manufacturing and non-manufacturing purchasing managers indices which although still stands below the 50 index point benchmark, has shown a noticeable improvement over time. In August 2021, the manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs improved to 46.9 index points apiece, compared with 46.6 and 44.8 index points respectively in June 2021. This was attributed to an increase in new orders, driven largely by rising demand, uptrend in business activities and further normalization of economic activities. Similarly, the employment level index component of the manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs in August 2021 
improved to 49.4 and 48.8 index points respectively compared with 46.5 and 47.0 index points in July 2021. The committee expressed optimism that with the current level of monetary and fiscal stimulus, as well as efforts to increase vaccination and contain the pandemic, the Nigerian economy will continue to improve in the short to medium term. CBN interventions continued largely in agriculture, manufacturing, energy, infrastructure, and micro, small, and medium enterprises. The committee reviewed the performance of the bank's interventions to sustain the recovery of output growth and address the downside risks to other external and domestic shocks to the economy. The Strategic Maize Reserve Program of the Central Bank of Nigeria has been useful in moderating maize prices particularly by directly targeting large feed mills producers under its Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme CACs, the CBN has supported 657 large-scale agricultural project, projects to the tune of 708.39 billion naira. To support MSMEs across the country, the bank disbursed 134.54 billion naira to 38,140 beneficiaries under the Agribusiness Small and Medium Enterprise Investment Scheme Axmis, and for the targeted credit facility, the sum of 343.21 billion naira has been released to 726,198 beneficiaries, comprising 602 households and 123,468 small and medium enterprises. Under the real sector facility, the bank released the sum of 1, billion, 1 trillion naira to 269 real sector projects, of which 140 are in light manufacturing, 71 in agro based industry, 47 in services, and 11 in mining. Under the healthcare sector intervention facility, 103.02 billion has been disbursed to 110 hectare healthcare projects of which 27 are pharmaceutical, 77 hospital services, and six other healthcare service projects. The bank has also disbursed a total of 145.99 billion under the non-oil sector stimulation, not ex, not oil export stimulation facility. The CBN has revised the guidelines working with Nigerian Export Import Bank to improve access to the intervention and stimulate non-oil export growth in Nigeria. Under the National Mass Metering Program, 41.06 billion naira has been disbursed to 10 discos for the procurement and installation of 759,748 electricity meters. Under the Nigerian Electricity Market Stabilization Facility NEMS 2, the bank has also released the sum of 145.66 billion naira to 11 discos as loans to provide liquidity support and stimulate critical infrastructure investments to improve service delivery and collection efficiency. In furtherance of its intervention in the energy sector, the bank has also disbursed 39.2 billion naira to six beneficiaries to improve gas-based infrastructure to support the federal government's auto gas conversion program. The bank has also encouraged deposit money banks to participate in the solar connection facility to improve energy access in the rural areas. The outlook for both the global and domestic economies appears mixed according to the committee due to lingering uncertainties over the end of the COVID-19 pandemic as well as continued mutation of the virus. Available data and forecasts for key macroeconomic variables for the Nigerian economy suggest further rebound in output growth for the rest of this year. This will however be hinged on the continued stability in oil price and robust vaccination in Nigeria and across other countries. Foreign exchange market stability, for, foreign exchange market stability further reduction in inflationary pressure in the economy and continued interventions by monetary and fiscal authorities 
are very important factors to sustain the recovery momentum. Consequently, the Nigerian economy is forecast to grow in 2021 at 2.86% central bank estimate, 3% federal government of Nigeria estimate, and 2.5% IMF estimate. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, just hold on in that case. Let me call out my pin. Uh, it is four, one... Uncle, please stop. Stop what? You're giving someone else your personal identification number pin? Oh, uh, not someone else. Uh, it's from my bank. Please hang up, Uncle. That's a fraud star. Th th that's not true. But, but they call out my full name. I am sure this is from my bank. Uncle, no bank is ever going to call you to ask for your personal identification number pin, your mobile banking password or your card verification code, CVC. But it sounded so genuine. Yes. Hackers and fraudsters always sound genuine. But please, uncle, don't fall for their bait. Don't respond to any phony emails, text message, SMS, and don't click on any link you're not sure of. Even if they call your date of birth or your BVN, don't give them your security details. If you suspect any issue with your account, please go to your bank. Oh, I see. This message is from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, this is from the CBN, where we bring you up to speed on the actions, policies, and initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Our robust payment system has continued to evolve towards meeting the needs of households and businesses in Nigeria. Reflective of the confidence in our payment system between 2015 and 2020, Close to $500 million worth of funds have been invested in firms run by Nigerian founders. Notwithstanding these gains, Your Excellency, close to 36% of adult Nigerians do not have access to financial services. Improving access to finance for individuals and businesses through digital channels can help to improve financial inclusion, lower the cost of transactions, and increase the flow of credit to businesses. It is in this vein that the Central Bank of Nigeria is working to deploy a central bank digital currency which would help in attaining our goals of fostering great, greater inclusion using digital channels, supporting cross-border payments for businesses and firms, as well as providing a reliable channel for remittance inflows into our country. When fully deployed, the e-Naira will ensure that Nigerians in remote areas can conduct financial activities using their digital as well as future and future phone devices. The support of the financial industry will be critical in the deployment of the e-Naira and efforts are ongoing to encourage continued partnership between CBN and stakeholders. That was the CBN Governor Mr. Godwin Mefiele at the recent 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference talking about the benefits that come with the full implementation of Nigeria's digital currency, the e-Naira. Now let's break it down further by telling you all there is to know about the e-Naira in this chat with the Director of CBN Information Technology Department, Mrs. Rekia Shuebo Mohammed. My name is Rekia Shuebo Mohammed. I'm Director of Information Technology, Central Bank of Nigeria. So a digital currency, especially in terms of central bank digital currency, is the digital representation of cash. In our case, it's the digital representation of Naira as we know it. So instead of having a physical wallet in your pocket, you will now have a digital wallet on a ledger. Um, you'll be able to conduct e-commerce and play in the digital economy. The problem of FX is beyond Central Bank of Nigeria. You, I'm sure if you have been following the events of the previous days, you would have noticed that Central Bank is doing everything it can, it can to be able to stabilize the Naira, which is one of our core mandates. And um, it takes all of us in the country to be able to stabilize that Naira. For example, the shirt you are wearing right now, I'm not sure it's made in Nigeria. If we would look inwards 
and buy made in Nigeria goods, then we will not, we will not be seeking for dollar. Therefore, it will not be scarce. That is one uh, fundamental issue. So we need to have a change of attitude. However, having said that, while we're working on stabilizing the, the dollar, we actually believe one of the benefits of e-Naira would be to encourage people to adopt the use of Naira. So instead of using um, physical cash, which may be difficult in conducting certain transactions that are online, you would be able to now have a digital representation and you'll be able to buy goods and services that you would otherwise have used some other means, including the dollar to buy. This will mean um, we may have more remittances into the country, therefore show up our reserves, so the supply side will increase while we're dealing with the demand side, as I share about change of attitude. In terms of the impact Inaira will have on the macroeconomic situation in the country, it will help us in churning out monetary policy decisions that are better informed because we will now have data. Say for example, um, if people begin to spend money that is outside the purview of Central Bank of Nigeria, then every policy we make will not take those into consideration, the informal economy, um, shadow spending and all that. But if you have data, you will be able to determine, for instance, the ve velocity of money because you have the data and the analysis and you will be able to make informed monetary policy. And where it's not working, you know exactly why it's not working. So that's one way the NRA will impact monetary policy decisions. The blockchain technology on which cryptocurrencies ride is a technology, is an innovative technology that is revolutionizing not just financial systems, but almost every facet of the economy as you know it in the world today. So it's like you build a house um, on a solid foundation and you leave windows, doors and roofs open, but you, um, central banks are now saying, this foundation is solid, it's innovation, it's revolution. We can actually build a solid house with the windows closed, uh, roofs done very well, and so on. And that's what we're doing for Nigerians, and giving them something that is safe, that is secure, that is a unit of account, and that can be used uh, as a legal tender. In era um, can be used anywhere cash can be used. Be because it's just, it's just a digital representation of it. You can use it to buy whatever you want to buy. You can use it to conduct transfers of money between your accounts and e-naira. Um, if you walk into a shop right today, for instance, um, if it was launched, you should be able to use it to pay. If you go online, uh, where merchants accept naira, you should be able to see the possibility to accept e-naira. Now, not all of this will come on October 1. Let me just um, add, we will start uh, with certain use cases and we will add as we move along. The cost of minting currency right now is high all over the world. And with um, in era we believe we will be able to reduce that cost by over 80%. Thirdly, the convenience, the, when you now exceed a certain amount, you can't withdraw anything. I mean, you, you have to pay to withdraw from the bank because of our cashless policy. In era, you'll be able to do that transaction. The fourth one is, if you walk into a supermarket today and say uh, you need 70 kobo change, nobody will give it to you because the coins have disappeared. With in era, you'll be able to get your change. So we're introducing back and hopefully with that, the value of Naira would um, improve. Over 30 million Nigerians are financially excluded and I think the uh, density of smartphone in the country is about 40 million. But I do know that over 100 million Nigerians too have, almost 200 million actually have um, ordinary phones, feature phones if you like. Um, so we're looking at introducing um, USSD service. So even without a smartphone, you'll be able to get the wallet created for you and you'll be able to instruct the ledger to transfer money or to be able to buy. 
Additionally, we're looking at off off uh, chain kind of payment, offline payments. So we could have a hardware wallet as well. So a card could carry actually the amount of money you have and you'll be able to transact money with it. So we have thought about that, about, but this is not coming on 1st October, but we do hope before the end of the year, this category of people you are talking about will be, will, will be able to access and use in air. The blockchain technology. The beauty of it is, it comes with all these security features. It uses cryptography, which is a way of um, scrambling information, and so people are not able to read what you are sending or receiving. And it also comes with a special security feature that if you initiate a transaction, it knows it's you, and you can't reverse it without following certain um, certain protocols. So, and, and then um, when you are creating your wallet, there are certain security security features we have put to ensure that is you and that's why we have chosen the NRI design um, CBDC design to be tied to identity so we, we before you create the wallet we would have ascertained is you who is trying to create the wallet uh, any transaction you, you 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 make on the ledger we know is you um, so we, we have done a lot of work around security and cyber security because we do recognize the threats and the vulnerability that could exist on the system will continue to monitor the situation and see what happens. Electronic uh, means of payment is a liability on your bank. So you have your, it's a representation of the money you have. It's not real money, right? Um, but e Naira is a liability of central bank, just like cash. So it's real money. And if uh, people have faith in illegal tender currency because it has the full backing of the state, so it, ha it has the full backing of the sovereignty of Nigeria. And so if anything, we don't expect anything to happen because it's guaranteed you will get your money back. And um, in terms of the other money, we back up the financial institutions, Central Bank and uh, NDIC, the sister institution, through insurance and so on. Um, and so you have that little risk of an intermediary. There's no intermediary between you and Central Bank in the case of Inaira because it's a legal tender. And we expect the transactions to be cheaper than the normal transactions because uh, you don't have so many intermediaries in order to be able to make the transaction as well. In terms of privacy, so your information as uh, a person is not kept on the ledger. Therefore, people don't know who is, I mean, don't see who is transacting. Um, we see that money is moving towards buying maybe more sugar in the economy. We see that people are buying perhaps more clothes. Um, we see the velocity of money. I mean, but we don't see that it's moving from Mr. A to Mr. B unless there's a special reason to do that, which would now dovetail into our um, anti-money laundering laws, um, anti-terrorism law, and all that, anti-counterfeiting laws. Um, so that is our privacy. Whatever privacy uh, is entitled to you according to the rules and regulations of the land are maintained. On the other side of benefits to you, I said before, that um, the transactions are, are going to be cheaper and the convenience of um, the instant settlement. So on a ledger, if you conduct a transaction, is either it is consummated or not. Um, and so you don't have to worry about, oh, this didn't hit my account, this hit my account, and so on and so forth. Aha, you want to call the number? Oh yeah, wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, zero. Ah, ah, no, uh, now. Nah. Ah, ah. Stop it. What? Stop. I'll call you back. Ah, what? Stop writing on the Naira. It's just 500 Naira. No matter the denomination, the Naira is not a sheet of paper to be written on or crumpled. It is Nigeria's legal tender currency. 
The Naira should not be abused by being sprayed or danced on at parties. The Naira is not a shelf item to be sold or bought along the road or at social events. And so how will I celebrate with people when I go for their parties? You can simply put your monetary gifts inside envelopes mm. and present to the celebrants. If I choose to spray and call, <laughs> you could go to jail for six months eh? or pay a fine of 50,000 Naira oh. or both. For real? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that all. Now you know. Spread the message. The Naira is a symbol of our national identity. Let's safeguard its integrity. Don't abuse the Naira. This message is from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. That's all from the CBN this week. If you have any banking-related issues or complaints that your bank could not resolve, haven't explored all possible means and within the stipulated time frame, you can report the matter with relevant documents to the CBN Consumer Protection Department through the email address cpd at cbn.gov.ng. That is cpd at cbn.gov.ng. You can also call the CBN Contact Center using the phone line below plus 234 700 Local courage may apply. We'd like to hear from you. Send your comments and contributions to the email address from the CBN at gmail.com. That is from the CBN at gmail.com. Find and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram for updates and uploaded episodes of the program. Join us again next time. I am William Dada. Stay safe and bye for now.